Hello everybody, welcome to an edition of Koopa Fantasy. I am of course Koopa Fantasy. Uh, you can find my blog online at koopafantasy.com. That's K-O-O-P-A fantasy.com. I blog about fantasy football and this is my week 14 some stardom video. If you uh, watch my videos from week to week, you may have noticed I didn't have a recap video last week. I'm not going to be doing them anymore. It's pretty late in the season. I'm a little busy right now with the end of the semester at school and a new internship. So it's just not going to be down to the starting videos, uh, but you can still find the written articles online at the blog. I'm still writing the recaps, just not uh, doing the videos for them. All right, so like I said, week 14, some stardom uh, videos, get right into it. Uh, Andrew Luck is my first pick for the stardom side. Uh, week 14 is here, obviously. While some people may have the playoffs locked up, others uh, still need to fight and claw their way in. And so I wouldn't really be taking any risks at QB this week. I consider looking at guys like Brandon Whedon uh, due to a good, uh, a good match up there, but... If you're in a 12-team, 14-team league, I don't think you need to dig that deep. Uh, I think someone like Andrew Luck is probably a great play this week. Titans have been very uh, good to opposing QBs. Luck has looked great this season, uh, contending for uh, probably rookie uh, offensive player of the year against RG3. That debate could go all day. Uh, the Titans have allowed 25 passing touchdowns this season. I think that's one of the highest. It would be, maybe only be one team higher with maybe 26, something like that. So a uh, great chance for Luck to get the momentum going. And if you need a win, you need some luck. <clears throat> uh, luck might be your guy. And then uh, some running back, uh, Ahmad Bradshaw against New Orleans with Brown out. Bradshaw got a lot of work last week. Uh, he's probably going to see the goal line carries, which was the big concern when Andre Brown was there. I don't think David Wilson is really a, a risk to steal that. So basically the bottom line is if uh, Bradshaw gets his 20 carries like he should, he's gonna have a, he should have a huge game. So uh, don't sit Ahmad Bradshaw this week if you have him. And then probably a guy who's going to be on tons of lists is uh, the guy, the, one of the pickup uh, players in the last two weeks is uh, Noshaw Moreno, filling in for Willis McGahey the rest of the season. Uh, he's likely to be on a ton of start lists this week, and for good reason. He's got a great matchup against the bad Raiders defense. That game is tonight, so hopefully this video gets up in time. Uh, YouTube's been weird for me lately. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if Noshaw Moreno found a way to put up double-digit fantasy points, given the fact that he's almost guaranteed a full workload at the position. And then on the wide receivers, Jeremy Macklin versus Tampa Bay. This one's a little bit worrisome, but I'm going to stick with it. Uh, Macklin really only has one good game under his belt with Foles throwing the ball, but I still think it will take uh, my chance with him in Week 14 against the Bucks, who are allowing quite a few yards and touchdowns in the air. Uh, and I think Bryce Brown's going to have a bit tougher of a matchup. Obviously, Bryce Brown owners start the guy. Um, he's been great so far, but it's a bit tougher of a matchup for him. He might not be able to tear through defense like he has his first two starts. So Macklin could see a high number of targets with no Deshaun uh, Jackson there, and uh, Foles um, probably going to have to target him quite a bit. Hopefully he can just get the ball into his hands. And then a, a repeat uh, player from last week, Eric Decker, had a great matchup, did not come through. I'm going to put him on the list again this week, so I think he's going to come through this week. He pretty much has to. Uh, it's another amazing matchup. In his last four starts, he only has about 100 yards and one touchdown, so he really needs to break out of that shell right now. Darius Thomas is the obvious number one there, making Decker like kind of a bit of the reason why he's taking a bit of that back seat, a, a big ba or a small back seat, I should say. But he's got a great chance to have a good game Thursday or tonight uh, in the matchup. Uh, Manning could probably or should easily throw for two to three touchdowns. The guy's contending for his fifth uh, MVP, so I think Decker could have touchdown number nine of the season in the process. And then Torrey Smith, I've had terrible luck trying to predict this guy's success this season. Anytime I tell you to start him in a good matchup, he does terrible. If I tell you to sit him because it's a bad matchup, he has a great game. So despite Flacco being on the road where he routinely sucks, uh, I'm going to go with it in a matchup against Washington, which usually end up in high-scoring games. And I'm just I'm really counting on Torrey this week because I know I have him in uh, two leagues, and I've been tr I've been fighting every week trying when I should start him, when I should sit him. And this week, I am starting him. And uh, Chris Gibbons versus Buffalo, a St. Louis wide receiver. He only has three touchdowns in the season, but he has been fairly consistent, putting up about 54 yards in each of his uh, games recently. And uh, with Danny Amendola out, he's uh, always pretty much uh, the number one, uh, the, the go-to guy. I'm not exactly 100% sure on Danny Amendola's status for the weekend right now, but I think I'm going to roll with Chris Gibbons either way. He's just been uh, been pretty consistent, and I think he's got a good chance to have a, have a touchdown in this game against Buffalo. And then... Uh, Still more wide receivers. Uh, Kenny Britt has touchdowns in back-to-back -back games despite having less than 50 yards in each. But the Colts um, have a terrible secondary so far this season, allowing tons of yards and tons of points to fantasy wide receivers. So look for Kenny Britt to hopefully push for 100, maybe have his third touchdown in a row. That would be amazing from him. 
And then um, Brandon Myers versus Denver, the tight end. Uh, Oakland, another one that's going tonight. So hopefully you'll see this in time or you're starting him anyways because he just keeps on producing lately. He's coming off a 130-yard game last week with a touchdown. A lot of it comes in garbage time. But since Oakland sucks and is always losing, there's going to be lots of chance for him to continue that trend. And then on to the sit side of the list. Uh, only one QB this week, uh, Phillip Rivers versus Pittsburgh. He only has two, three touchdown games so far all this season. And I do not think he's going to have one this week against Pittsburgh. Enough said. And then Reggie Bush versus San Fran. It's been a bit of a tough puzzle to solve in recent weeks, starting Reggie Bush, having some of his best outings against tough defenses like the Seahawks, and having some bum efforts against bad ones like the Bills. But despite that, uh, I not trusting Reggie Bush to do much this weekend against San Fran, despite the fact that I am a Miami Dolphins fan myself. And then Steven Ridley, this one's a little bit risky. Uh, he uh, is, is really good at finding the end zone uh, because due to the fact that the uh, New England Patriots offense moves the ball so well. But against Houston, probably one of the best offenses we're going to see this season. I'd be a little hesitant in uh, expecting a huge game from Steven Ridley, though I still think he's going to have a good chance of going for close to double digits. It's just that if you start him as your number one guy, he might be more of a number two, number three guy this week. And then James Jones versus Detroit. Uh, this one actually could change uh, as the weekend comes because uh, Greg Jennings, uh, I've heard that he actually might have been hurt again. Uh, Jordy Nelson is always questionable the last couple weeks. So James Jones, if Jordy Nelson's in, if Greg Jennings is in, and Randall Cobb is obviously good to go. Uh, I'm not really liking James Jones' chances of having a big game. Uh, so that's basically, James Jones is a guy you really have to look into before you start him this weekend and see what's going on with the, all the other guys on the team. And then Miles Austin, uh, Dallas wide receiver versus Cincy. He was able to come up with a touchdown last week, but he only had two catches for 20 yards to go with it. Des Bryant is one of the best wide receivers in the league right now, uh, having a huge uh, streak. He's got tons of touchdowns and yards in the last four or five starts, making Austin an obvious number second, uh, number two option there. And on the road against the Bengals this Sunday, I am not expecting much from Miles Austin as the Bengals defense and their secondary more particularly has been pretty good this season. And then Golden Tate versus Arizona. Uh, this one is a, maybe a little bit risky as well. I'm, personally, I'm not expecting a lot from Tate this week, despite how good he's looked recently. The thing is that Sidney Rice is uh, possibly going to be out because of the massive hit he took last week in their big win and that touchdown catch. But still, Golden Tate is not a guy I personally touch or trust right now. The Cardinals, who have been dismal, uh, losing eight trades, going 4-0, uh, still do have a pretty good secondary uh, at times. Uh, P Patrick Peterson has... The, Sometimes can be shut down, sometimes can be beat, and if he ends up on Tate with Sidney Rice out, I'm not liking Tate's chances against Patrick Peterson one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And then uh, for San Diego, Antonio Gates versus Pittsburgh. As someone who started Gates and uh, who targeted Gates in quite a few leagues, I should say, expecting him to be able to get him later than those elite guys and expecting him to have a bit of a bounce back year, uh, be healthy and be playing most of the season. And he has been healthy, he hasn't played most of the season, but he's been a massive disappointment. He's got a measly 400 yards, only four touchdowns. And uh, two of those touchdowns come in one game, so it's not very uh, balanced. Uh, but personally, as someone who owns him in uh, multiple leagues, I am ready to look elsewhere for a tight end. Um, a guy like Brandon Myers is a guy I picked up recently. Uh, Kyle Rudolph I've had uh, on benches, not on my team with him. I've been trading them back and forth. and I, it's Recently, it's just been Rudolph, 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 though. Antonio Gates is heavily disappointing. All right, guys, that is it for the Week 14 sit him Stardom video. Uh, one of the longest weeks. There's actually lots of players on it. It's a pretty key time of the season. Trying to get my fill on uh, lots of players, give you guys my opinion. As always, hit me up on Twitter at Blackie underscore Mike. That's the easiest way to get in, uh, in uh, touch with me, ask me questions, stuff like that. I really appreciate it. If you like and subscribe to my videos, visit my blog, uh, rate the stuff. Even if you hate it, you think it's crap, comment, do stuff like that. If you love it, then uh, rate it high. All right, guys, Keep the Fantasy is out here. Peace. Good luck this weekend.